of part eight, Alive and Thriving, we're going to cover a range of material. I'll start with talking about something I'm calling North Star Mapping. It's a visual model of seeing how we can start to identify our, our purpose, our North Star what's really important, where we want to go, that gives us, you know, some momentum towards doing something valuable in our lives and how we can start to identify what that is and to map it out. And it really is about, you know, identifying a why um, and really seeing value in your own life. Because from that place of value that you have motivation and direction, and that makes all of our decisions easier. So a few tricks and tips for self-protection, some tools for success in the practical world, including goal setting and time management, how to get along with people. We'll talk a bit about the trauma and stress responses, how, how this interacts and relates directly to our re relationships and our, the quality of our relationships. We'll talk about an int introductory to healing from those traumas and the importance of doing the inner work. And we'll go into some more detail about this and what is shadow work. So finding your North Star, this idea has names from various uh, traditions such that as the North tradition, you might think of this as your Orlog, your purpose, or in the um, Indian tradition, the Dharma, you could think of it as your soul desire. You know, if you if you like the con the concept of of us our soul almost choosing our life experience that there's some kind of purpose uh, for this particular life, something for us to learn or achieve. You know, it's sort of that deep, right, and meaningful as a soul soul desire, soul path. And I <clears throat> I would say as humans. Because we, for some reason, wake up without all of our memories and of wisdom from past lives. Sometimes we can get glimmers or we remember. But for the most part, we're, we start out pretty impressionable. We're a very programmable little being that's very dependent on the parents or caregivers that are there for us right from out the gate. So I, I see for all of us, really, it's a crooked, a crooked path to this North Star. Most of us don't have the clarity right away, but it takes a meandering road and sidetracking and getting in ruts. So, so it's often a crooked path. So accept that, you know, don't be so hard on yourself if you're like, oh, my God, but I'm 58 years old and... I really kind of fucked up and wasted a lot of time. Yes, there's really no timeline here. The timeline is so much bigger. And it doesn't matter when you're starting to wake up to this realization and seeing, you know, how, on a, how asleep you were, right? But your head's happening now. So be persistent. <clears throat> it's a crooked but persistent path. And that persistence and that determination, which... It's, it's also self-love. It's really important. And I'll add that it's also a spiral path to mastery, that nothing really happens in this straight line, but that there's a spiraling road that we take. And, and, and hopefully we continue to grow and learn and we're spiraling in a good direction, you know, towards the point, towards truth, towards unity. And this means we need to persist through any perceived failures, that we don't let ourselves get stuck, and that we seek learning and expansion from all of our mistakes, looking out for detours, watching out for dead ends and cul-de-sacs and eddies that keep us twirling and swirling. <clears throat> that happens sometimes. And when you catch yourself in one of these eddies and in a cul-de-sac, in a dead end, you're worth working harder to get out of there.
Like it can feel hard sometimes when we're stuck and we don't know how to get out. And it sometimes could feel easier just to cave in and give in to the status quo and allow the losses. And <clears throat> that generally leads to people being un really unfulfilled and, and using sensory material substitutes for true happiness and usually some sort of over medication or physical illness you know keeps you stuck because the body will bear the burden of unfulfillment and energy that is being suppressed within our system so we all exist in a condition where people in situations having been raised by people in situations who are raised by people in other situations and those conditions vary and but i would i would guess that pretty much all of us have had suffering both in our lives and have parents who have suffered and their parents have suffered and there's been all sorts of um tragedies and hardships and wars and abuses that have gone on regardless of your financial status And so there is a, a determination really required to rise above those conditions, to transcend and transmute those circumstances into something lighter. And this involves perseverance, determination, and not giving up. And, and, and seeing yourself as a hero in the hero's journey. And this is a concept that has uh, been documented by Joseph Campbell a book by that name. It's about his deep study of the mythos and looking at really this mythological journey that represents a process within each of us to overcome and transcend obstacles in our life. You know, that we, we sit in a place of, of okayness, you know, ignorance in the wheel of change, you might call that pre-contemplation. You don't know what you don't know. And inevitably though, boom, you know, there's a, a hardship of some sort that just sort of seems to occur. And it puts us in a journey of causes and effects and sometimes unpredictable uh, experiences that can lead us to a place of despair, of helplessness, of feeling not good enough, not powerful enough. And, and those are the tests of our of our life. Those are the, the character building events where what really matters is that you don't give up on yourself and that you learn the skills of mastery, you know, that, that are available to the extent that they are. And be determined based on knowing that you want to relieve your own suffering and that you're worth it and that you have value. And what I notice is that <clears throat> that basic need to care about yourself and see yourself as worth it and valuable is one of the hardest stumbling blocks to overcome. And sadly, many, many people have had life experiences that have damaged their self-esteem and their sense of worthiness. And so this is really a very important place to start. And this is where natural law really shines because natural law says that we are all worthy, that we're all important, that every individual, every living being has value and is worthy of protection and nurturing love, protection, right? And it's our true heart's desire um, that we, we want to excavate and, and understand. And it's probably very different than what you've been taught or programmed or conditioned as to what's important. So, through our trials and tribulations, we get to have more, hopefully more clarity if you do the personal work and self-reflection. 
and then activate your will in the direction of your true heart's desire, along with the bumper, you know, the, the, it's like the side bumpers on the bowling alley that basically give us parameters, right, to, to guide us towards the free expression of our will and our creative desires but just following your desires without these bumpers on the sides that dictate like right and wrong then we can be dangerous and ultimately create more chaos and suffering in the world so natural law is this concept of every life has value don't harm it, right? Be aware that you can do whatever you really want for your jo enjoyment in life as long as you're not hurting other people or other sentient beings, even animals. And people will argue this to great extents. And there's a moral basis for that argument. And so obviously life gets complicated sometimes and that's where people just like throw it out but there's really a beautiful simplicity to this concept that we can that we can embrace that could really help our lives so i hope that this comes across throughout woven throughout this other content so your north star is your sole purpose and i'm hoping to inspire you to start contemplating on what that may be and develop a vision, a vision that, that is inspiring to you, that is motivating to you, and that this vision be bigger than yourself, but that takes on a bit of the mythos of the hero who has a relationship to other people and to the world around them, and often is seen as a hero to others because of principles that guide the vision, that, that, that the vision is bigger. It's, we're talking really big. See yourself as important, as being important to the world, that you were born for a reason at this time and place, and that you have this unique combination of potent of abilities and experiences and knowledge and unfulfilled potential that this the world needs now and so if you believe in yourself and you can consider this possibility then there's so much open to you and start with asking what fires you up what fires your passion and your enthusiasm what is it? What fires you up? If money were no object and you could not fail, what would you really truly want to be doing with your life? And think it through just the immediate, like, oh my God, I want to go travel the world or, and, and there's nothing wrong with that per se, but keep thinking it through thinking it through, you know, after the thrill of something new wears off, what would you really want to be doing day after day? What would, where would you want to be? Who would you want to be with? What, what are the skill? Is there something that you would do if, even if you didn't get paid to do it? Think about those things. And this would be a meditation to do separate and really uh, contemplate, write down things. So we're doing self-inquiry and we're starting to ask, what is my North Star? What is it that I will feel makes my life valuable when I die and I look back on my life and the kind of person that I was and how I used this time? What would I feel really satisfied with? Yeah, pretty deep question. So as you start to get some de definition there, thinking about 
Well, from where I am today to dying with that satisfaction that I lived a life well done, what are some of the milestones along the way? What are the, the goals and markers, you know, that I need to, to be working about, working on and thinking about? You know, does this mean that I need a change of career, a change of, of, of how I get my money? Does it mean that I need to uh, relate and interact with other people differently? You know, really start to think, to, to feel satisfied. What are all the things along the way between now and then? to make that happen and start writing those down. And, and you might start to see that there, there may or may not be an order. You need to learn something. You need to go and practice it. You know, you need to connect with people. You need to make amends, whatever it might be. Start writing those things down and realize that there are behaviors and changes of behavior that are required that this has to go beyond just the idea. It, it has to follow with starting with the mind, with the vision, the creative idea, the goals, to then the actions. And there's often a process of, of movement for change, where remember before I said we could be in a place of um, of not awareness, non-awareness, pre-contemplation. We're not seeing all the things happening around us. But then things happen, we start to reflect, we look, we start to, to see, oh my God, there's some things that are really putting in question my sense of okayness, <laughs> right? And the things I thought were true. And so you start to contemplate and seek knowledge and gain wisdom, gain not from that knowledge and gain perspective. And that will then lead to setting some, some goals for change, to set a, an aim, a short-term, a star, right? It, it's on the way to your North Star, but there are other measuring points along the way for you to define for yourself so that you have something concrete and this involve, is going to be a complex process of having your mind straight, really working with your self-doubts, uh, finding the affirmations of who you are. And, the, and, and I always say, you really need to know very clearly the why. Why is this important? Why is this something that you, you, you should not give up on? Why should you persevere through difficulty? Why should you feel the hard feelings? You know, what, what is the real value of what you're, you're endeavoring on here? There, there has to be a clarity because you are going to hit walls. You are going to struggle at different points. And it's okay to get somewhere and pause and recuperate and then start again. And that's where I say this path is, it can, is crooked. It's not all a straight line. You're kind of meandering. Hopefully you're not going too far astray that you're able to, through your principles and clarity and reflection and review and goal setting, keep yourself kind of in check within some bumpers, right? Ultimately with the, the non-aggression principle and the self-defense principle, ultimately keeping you intact because they're like the boundaries that we put in place to create our situation. Our boundaries define our, our experience. Think about it. If we don't have a boundary that there's an opening for someone else to pull us, right? Or us to be hampered down with unnecessary weight, right? Whatever it is, boundaries are important. And the only way you know what boundary to set is if you're clear on who you are, what you want, and where you're going. So this is important. And ongoing education, the open mind towards continual taking in of knowledge, the, the willingness to confront your own um, rigid thinking patterns, your assumptions, and the foundations even maybe of how you've lived your life. This is hard work, but it's also super exciting. And, I, and it can take support. You may need support along the way. 
and some skill build, building because there are skills needed to develop success and the maintenance of your success and different kinds of ways to intervene. And so, you know, one of the skill sets is around your own physiology, understanding how your body works and your, your, your spiritual and mental body, understanding psychology and doing that deep inner work. So essential. Otherwise, your clarity will be will be skewed. And there's all sorts of different skills that um, can assist you to empower you to succeed. You know, if you're going to go on a long distance trek across kind of hostile wild lands, you probably you need a, a weapon or two. You need a sword. You know, need to know how to use it. You need to have warm blankets or warm furs. You need, you know, ways to keep yourself safe and a, and a map of some sort to get where you're going and know how to read it. You might need to know how to read the stars or how to steer a ship. So, so there's definitely going to be real life skills and, and some kind of scaffolding that you can rest on that can help you during the roughest of times. And these might be mentors, friends, support system of some sort, teachers, um, support groups, different things. And, and there's no harm. There's no, no shame really in leaning on someone now and then or allowing someone to teach you or support you. And, and there's a vulnerability there and there's a lot of conditioning that has, especially in the Western world, led us to be very staunch individual lists and like uh, and not wanting help, seeing it as a weakness. And that's a, that's a mind control technique that's really weakened us. The strongest of people have been weakened by that mindset. I see, see it in myself. I've seen it in my family. So you want to be aware. You want to pay attention, frequently check in on this, these steps and your progress. And notice any signs that you're off track or stuck in an eddy. Uh, twirling around with your who knows what part coming out right um, and I I want to emphasize that this is a very individual process uh, the, the outcome the, the your particular map is going to be unique to you it's going to be very individual and and it shouldn't you shouldn't take from someone else you might be inspired by some things but really make this about you the answers are within you and along the way, you know, this is could feel challenging. There are risks, you know, to growth. Sometimes things feel worse before they get better. Sometimes growth hurts relationships if not both parties are growing, things like that. Um, you're going to have temptations. You'll have blind spots. Just when you think you figured something out, you're going to get hit with another blind spot and be like, oh my God, how did I miss that? And I just think that that is, um, <laughs> my cat was in a laundry basket and the whole thing fell over onto the floor. And she did a flip and she's a little bit shocked. <laughs> Poor little cat. Um, anyway, so you, you are going to, um, there can be a frustration when you decide you're going to grow and then you keep falling in the same hole a few times. And, and I just want to normalize that and encourage you to just not give up. And I also think that when you're not too isolating, if you, if you isolate and you're like ashamed or embarrassed to talk about things with people, you just always try to fix it yourself. You're going to, it's going to take longer. You're going to get stuck more take it from me. That's kind of the story of most of my life. It's not something you have to do all alone. We need the reflection of others. And so you're doing your self-reflection and you're, you're also opening up to some reflection from others, some interaction, opening to the growth and the vulnerability of relationships. And this is self-growth work. So let's start out with just this promise to yourself that you will acknowledge the small wins, 
that you are going to watch out for your perfectionism and the self-criticism, uh, those ob obsessively dissatisfied, not good enough parts that don't that don't want to acknowledge and give you reward when it feels like you fuck up too much, right? A lot of you can relate to me. So be prepared to acknowledge the small wins. We have to find fuel and motivation along the way. Otherwise, you'll never get there. It'll feel like you'll, it's, the goal is always going to move out. And so the key to continuing the journey is to really set yourself up with four successes and being in the present moment, noticing all of the good as you go, living in gratitude, seeing the effort, seeing every step forward in the context of this North Star, which is your guiding light, the dot in the center of the circle. And we can keep an eye, a part of our vision there, right, on the land ahead, while we're also paying attention to all the waves and the conditions that we're in right here. So, that's, so this is an exciting journey and one for sure through which you'll find growth. So watch out for tricks. We want to have some built-in self-protection. And the tricks are the things that will pull us off path, the temptations and the pitfalls. And these can be um, unresolved personality qualities, uh, possibly things like uh, codependency and enabling, being a people pleaser, um, avoiding conflict, uh, addictions, seeking pleasure as your priority, um, feeling resentful. There's lots of different pitfalls and, and things that can pull us off path. And our own defenses, our own psychological defense system is often the very thing, right? That's mostly fucking us up. So it's real important that we understand how to map our, our own mind and understand our, what's driving us. So brain chemistry and the, the science of the nervous system is an important study here because the more we understand the way our body and our pleasure seeking and re reinforcement pathways work in our nervous system and understand the brain chemistry and the psychological parts that are a part of our personal defense system, our fight, flight, freeze, fawn system, these are, it's like understanding our technology. It's under, if you want to be a mechanic of a car, you have to understand how the car works. If you want it, the car to drive well and you want to optimize it, it's the same with us. Don't just defer the knowledge about how your body works to some like other person who really isn't invested in really understanding how your body works. There are common ways our bodies work, this universal principles in our anatomy and physiology. However, what's the specific condition of yours is unique to all of your experiences in life and your genetics and DNA and the social conditioning. And, you know, so we're all so unique and we want to learn the universal things and then be detectives in understanding how those have played out in our own lives, in our own bodies, minds, and spirit. And this is kind of what I like to do with to help people is I have this, this sort of ability to sort of see this very holistic and integrative picture. Um, and I can help guide you in, in doing your own assessment and understanding what's going on. Um, what are some of the other tricks that pull us off path? Well, we could look at our culture, the religions of the world. Organized religions, you know, Judaism, um, Islam, Christianity, the New Age, New Cage movement. Uh, there's, there is something, um, there's a pitfall, there's a trick, there's a trap door, there's something, you know, to watch out for in every organized religion. And we can now see that 
science has become a religion that we could call scientism, which isn't really true science. It's this, I have a degree and I'm a doctor and I say that, blah, blah, or this government um, three-letter or four-letter you know, institution is the ultimate authority to tell you what is and whatever they say goes. And this becomes this, this sort of distorted religion of scientism. And then of course, politics and, and government itself is a type of religion, believing in these principles, not even principles, but in these, it's like the things you learn in school about your, your US government is such a fantasy. It had a fantasy like myth, mytho, mytho, mythology to it that you just sort of like, it's been programmed in our heads to feel proud, American, land of the free, home of the brave, you know, all of this shit. And we you need to question it. You need to question about how marvelous our governmental structure is. Maybe there's some brilliance in its original design, but right now it's really being derailed and fucked with and turned upside down. And there's no legitimate reason to trust it anymore, to put your trust in voting or these elected people that are becoming more like caricatures from a freaking like sci-fi movie than reality, you know? So really like, question things because they are tricks the new age movement puts in some real gems but then it's gearing people pulling people away from self-defense and foot and being willing to really look at and and learn about the problems money has become like a religion it's what people seem to uh, put ahead of all else like a god you know, materialism, just accumulating, accumulating stuff is a trick. Buying the bigger house, right? Titles, really wanting to have this title behind your name, to be able to sit at the head table, to uh, have a certain clout, a certain power, to feel like you're the big man um, or the big woman. And it's 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 like a lot of these are ego 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 tricks so this mesm may mesmerize you you know and being you have to be aware of your own vulnerability to be hooked by that those are going to trick you they're going to take you off your true north star path and of course there's unhelpful worldviews you know if you think that you know that there's just the haves and the have nots and never shall you cross that line. Like that's going to hold you back from achieving some abundance that you might otherwise get, you know, things like that. Um, we need to be very cautious. We need to be knowledgeable about technology because it is being used against us. We are being manipulated in many ways through technology. And a lot of us, my generation and people older than me, especially have really resisted certain um, things about technology, but we're really seeing that, that it's important. And if we want to make good choices and maintain our sovereignty, our freedom, our choice, we wanna understand about how we use technology and the social media and the information that you're giving away and the freedoms and rights that you're giving away. And just be very aware that we are getting tricked through these me mediums. And, you know, the algorithms on the social media is really taking advantage of our brain chemistry. They're, it's designed by people, social engineers that understand human psychology. They understand the theories of learning, the reinforcement of behavior, and they're using it to get us to do what they want us to do and buy things and stay mesmerized and listen to their news and all of this stuff. And we don't wanna do any of that unconsciously. We, you really wanna know how you're being tricked and make a commitment to yourself to uh, be mindful and, and choose your path, choose your path. 
And if you're not sure where to go, you look at your North Star and you, is this decision going to bring me in the direction of my North Star or is it going to pull me on some detour? Am I willing to pay the price of this time or the risks of this alluring, addictive thing, you know, that could pull me way far off for longer than I want, you know, like really be real with yourself about the decisions you make. And I know it's hard sometimes because we have veils that confuse us. And um, we'll talk more about that. So watch out for the mind control strategies and the effects that on you and in the people around you. Learn about these concepts and watch for the inversions of truth. A lot of what we're told is true is really the opposite of true marketing. Um, this really doesn't care about what's true. Advertisements don't care about the, what's true. Even the news doesn't really have as its main agenda the truth, okay? Um, it's easy to be spellbound by imposters and actors. They're all around us at every level of every institution that we, uh, op we're dependent on and inter-reliant and that often people trust. So as you're looking at yourself and thinking about where you need to build self-protection, ask yourself, what's my vulnerability? Am I a people pleaser? Am I, a, I hate conflict, I'll just do it. What makes peace? You know, am I like really sucked into this like social networking, getting likes. I love writing my posts and checking to make sure I'm getting my likes. Do Am I hooked into a dogma of a religion? Am I so bought into uh, one picking a side of a dialectic that I'm, for, I'm losing track of the big picture? What's your vulnerability? And my advice is to seek truth, not comfort but seek truth as a main priority, the most important thing. Seek alignment, alignment within yourself, within your mind, body and spirit, within your thoughts, feelings, and actions, alignment with your goals, principles, alignment with the why you're, you're, you're headed towards the North Star. And, and, and be wary of focusing too much on stuff, or power. Uh, money is a most imp most powerful religion in our world and is often our easiest pitfall. It's very tied into some instinctual desires to stay alive <laughs> and to focus on security. And the first chakra kind of and bottom level of Maslow's pyramid, yeah, you know, just being alive, having food, shelter, clothing. Uh, the financial stressors of life can really uh, feel like it, we're being threatened in that way. And the accumulation of money and material comforts can be like a drug, numbing us from our pain and giving us an illusion of happiness, but it's fleeting and shallow. Remember the basics and think about what has intrinsic value. What is something that is so valuable that money can't buy it, you know, your self-respect, your, you know, your, your, what, what it is, requires you for to live, right? Your knowledge, your freedom to do with your hands that which, you know, will help provide you with shelter. You know, something has a true intrinsic value if it directly provides a survival benefit, cloth for your clothing, material for your shelter, a garden or you know plants for your food, a well for water in the most basic sense, okay? Money's a symbol, it's like a false God without actual intrinsic meaning beyond that which we give it. Money is a control tool because it can be manip manipulated to play with your true intrinsic needs 
you know, of survival. And I'll add here that something of intrinsic value is also like connection with other people. To some degree, we are social creatures and there is a need for certain types of um, well-being that comes from our relationship with others or a sense of purpose and value in the world, our, our, our ability to give back to life itself, to have a legacy. Truth is available only to those who have the courage to question whatever they have been taught. And so I encourage you to question the beliefs that you have been given around what's important. You know, like, you know, the American dream, get married, buy a house, have children, work, send your kids to school, encourage them to go to college. Like there's this sort of like formula that I invite, I invite all of you to question. So the survival value of intelligence is that it allows us to extinct a bad idea before the idea extincts us. <laughs> so use your intelligence to question and the, the truth of your beliefs and the efficacy of your desires and your, um, your thoughts. So we're going to move on to another subcategory of skills for success. Align your life around these three moral principles, these three core things, self-ownership, non-aggression, and self-defense. Self-ownership, you own yourself. This is your body. This is my body, okay? You have a body. Your body's not my body. My body's certainly not your body. No one is responsible for this body and how it's cared for, but me, my doctor. I don't even have a doctor. No one else, but your doctor is not responsible for your body. Okay, you are. What you do to it, what you put in your mouth, how you move your body, who you let touch your body. Okay, the things you do with your, your hands, it's all about you. You own it. So this is personal responsibility. Principle two, non-aggression. Do not initiate violence. Okay, we don't have a right. I don't have a right to initiate violence on you. You don't have a right to initiate violence on me. You don't have a right to steal from me, to hurt my body, to sexually violate me. You don't have a right to coerce and manipulate and try to, you know, strong arm me to do what you want me to do. Okay, you don't have a right to lie and make up stories to get me to do something either. If those are wrongs, and, and how would you feel if I tried to do those things to you? You know, unless you're truly broken and masochistic, you would not like it. If I came up to you and slapped you in the face, or told you that your house is burning down when it's not, or tried to sexually violate you, or kill you, or you know manipulate you to do something with the threat of violence, threaten violence so that you do what I want, right? I don't understand how anyone could disagree with those things. And yet we can look around the world and see people making excuses to go and destroy people's homes, trespass. That's another one. You don't have the right to trespass and I don't have the right to trespass on your property or to take your property. Theft is wrong. Okay, you, you don't have a right to my stuff. I don't have the right to yours. We, but we see it to being justified all the time in wars and intrusions that are unwanted and somehow people just are okay with that it's we are witten, we are complicit to so many violations of natural rights okay and what we're missing is self defense and the self self defense principle is essential mm -hmm. if you love yourself 
you will defend yourself, you will protect yourself. If you love your child, you will defend against harm against them. You will defend them, you will protect them, right? Wouldn't you? Most of us understand that that's right. We do have the right to self-defense, but yet again, we are so passive in our world because somehow we have this thought system like we don't have the right or the power to change what's going on. We just have to accept it. So remember that self-defense is a right and it is essential. It's part of the boundaries, setting boundaries is what self-defense involves as well, saying no, because our experience is defined by our boundaries, by what we say yes to and what we say no to. And what we do, and whether it's moral or immoral, if we violate morality and we try to steal and, and violate another, then we're going to have an experience, a consequence to this someone does that to us, there should be a consequence and a line. And overall, we have been as a species very pacified into not defending ourselves, or at least not doing it in a proper way that's effective, okay? So we want to, as we continue towards this North Star mission, to develop three important skills. One, we need to be able to set goals. We need to, to do some research, decide what is right, what we want, and then we need to set some goals with some action steps and objectives on the way to their completion. And this is going to involve time management, understanding time, ourself in this somewhat linear idea of time, and managing ourselves, our choices, overcoming our avoidance tendencies, our procrastination, right? So set goals, manage your time, and get along with people. It's inevitable that our success, our expansion, our growth, our movement along in the direction of our greatest vision and dream is going to involve interactions with other people and it's going to benefit all of us to learn those relational skills okay and that's where we get triggered it's the most important area for the self-inquiry and the healing work and the commitment to care about others as much as you care about yourself and this means do your shadow work self-reflect and build self-awareness so for a minute or so, do some self-assessment. How well are you doing in these areas? How personally self-responsible are you? Are you living by the non-aggression principle? And are you using adequate self-defense? Are you setting goals, managing your time, and getting along with people? Reflect on this. Jot down some thoughts about areas for improvement or questions you may have. I'm going to pause this um, video series here and invite you to do that self-reflection. And then we'll come back to part two of um, number eight, <laughs> 8B.